there. Welcome to First Glance with Jody Vance. I'm very excited to have this next conversation because fun fact about me uh, in terms of who I am away from my work life is I'm a mom. I'm a mom of a teenager. And a lot of mom groups are talking about things like microdosing psychedelics, which even just a few years ago would have made me go, hold the phone. My kid's not going anywhere near. And now it's making some significant sense. It is coming into the sort of the real world. I'm a chicken, haven't tried it yet, but I've talked to a bunch of people who have legitimately found exponential improvement for their blues or their depression, mental health struggle, struggles and anxiety. So this is a conversation that we're, we're opening up and looking for uh, more information on. And one of the companies that's sort of at the core of this is Core One Labs, Inc. The stock symbol is cool which I think might be the coolest stock symbol ever, literally and figuratively. <laughs> and the CEO is Joel Shaker joining us on First Glance. Hi, Joel. Hey, Jody. Thanks for having me on. I'm so glad to have you here. I know you kind of have an idea of what we do here at First Glance with Jody Vance is just kind of open up that accessibility to all investors, not just the expensive suit and the pocket squares. We want everybody to understand what companies like yours are about so that you can kind of get in when things are about to bust out big. You heard me in the intro there. It has become ever more normalized from a citizen's perspective, the industry that you're bringing to the table here. Can you give us a little bit of an idea of what Core One Labs Inc. is all about? Yeah, Core One Labs is a psychedelic company with many facets to it. Um, it's The scientific vision is led by Dr. Bob Hancock who is based out of University of British Columbia. He's actually one of the leaders in the psychedelic space and has, uh, has received numerous awards for his work. He's actually received the Order of Canada. He's, he's uh, received 60 patents, and he's also published over 600 papers. Wow. So he's very, very well established. And one of the lead assets that Core One Labs has is uh, Vocan, which is Dr. Hancock's brainchild. And what Vocan does is they are a lab based on Vancouver Island, and they are working to uh, biosynthesize psilocybin. Now, what does that mean? What does well, that mean? <laughs> exactly, right? So yeah. currently, psilocybin is produced in, as people know, magic mushrooms. And one of the ways to get the pure form of psilocybin out of those mushrooms is to cultivate the mushrooms and then extract them using a number of different pieces of machinery. Now, what that does is it takes a long time to do, and it costs quite a bit of money. So because of that, we're looking for ways to actually um, actually reduce the cost of it and shorten the time frame for it. So currently psilocybin, API grade psilocybin, costs about $7,000 to $10,000 per gram. So very expensive. Yeah, it's, it's wow. Wow. Yeah. We believe. Yeah, we believe that through our biosynthetic process, we're going to be able to reduce the cost to below $100 per gram. Yes. That's game changing. It is game changing. And because we're, we're going to be able to change the industry so much, we're actually looking at all of the different uh, psychedelic companies in the space that are using psilocybin in their drugs and their clinical trials as customers, because they're going to need to get their pharmaceutical grade ingredients, psilocybin, from someone. And we're aiming to be that person. So you become the source providing the ingredient source provider. Exactly. To, exactly. Wow. The, yeah. Joel. Yeah. So, and I think that, you know, we're, we're working uh, quite a bit with Vocan to be able to develop this biosynthetic psilocybin. And one of the recent uh, announcements we made was we actually partnered with uh, the laboratory at university of British Columbia to uh, work with them. So that means, uh, not only we have our, our lab on Vancouver Island, but we also have a 10,000 square foot state of the art facility with a number of different people working in it at UBC uh, to help expedite this process of developing biosynthesized psilocybin at scale. There's something to be said, Joel, and maybe this is just, um, I, again, the mom in me, as opposed to the, the broadcaster, the interviewer, or what have you, it, it makes me feel more secure knowing that this is all happening, not only in our backyard in British Columbia, where we are talking right now, but also at an institution, the ilk of UBC, the level of, I mean, in order to be 
I mean, the order of Canada for crying out loud, like everything you're saying is giving comfort to what can be, and let's call it what it is, scary for some people. When you're talking about, you know, magic mushrooms, people immediately go to, oh, that's the the drugs, you got to stay away from the, but we're actually seeing such a, such a pivot now. Let's talk about how, you know, the antidepressants have been the first line of defense for so long. And when it came in a capsule, we never worried about what was in it or where it came from. But all of a sudden you shift into the psychedelic, you know, uh, file, I guess, with regard to treatment of depression and, and, and coming into um, just how many people this could help if it becomes normalized. And where I'm going with this exponentially too long question is the fact that when it's not derived from, you know, let's get the mushroom and figure out and because some mushrooms are stronger than other mushrooms and what have you, it sounds to me in the synthetic grade that you would be able to be extraordinarily certain as to the impacts of, of, and the consistency and the impacts of, of everything that comes out of this facility. Yeah. I mean, I think that what you're seeing in the industry is that it's all becoming uh, a very pharmaceutical based approach to it. Thank right? you. That's so, what I was trying to say. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And if you look at, you know, who the institutions are that are doing the research, you know, you see a lot of work being done at John Hop- Johns Hopkins. You see, you know, the New England Medicine of Journal coming out with that recent report. Uh, you know, UBC is getting involved. Um, you know, the big names in research uh, are really getting involved. And that's where a lot of the analysis is being done on, you know, how this is helping people with depression or anxiety, uh, how this is being helped treat, you know, opiate addiction or, or alcohol addiction. So I think that the, the real driver right now is coming from the science-based community who's yeah. looking at this as an alternative for, uh, you know, a, a treatment that really isn't working that well. You know, we've been losing the, boor- the war on opioid addiction. We've been yeah. losing the war on depression and anxiety. Yeah. As you see, it's becoming more and more prevalent, especially with what we what we see happening with coronavirus and the pandemic and everything. So there's no doubt. Let's uh, reiterate for our listener. Core One Labs, Inc. Core One Labs, Inc. The stock symbol. Easy to remember. It's cool. It's C-O-O-L. I love the stock symbol. It, it's uh, I like everything that you're telling us here, Joel. Joel Shaker is the CEO of Core One Labs, Inc. And when we're talking about investment, like you, you gave a, a great preamble to sort of frame up what the company is all about and the science behind it and the, and the people involved, very important, all of that. But the market that you're looking at, when we talk about, especially in this time of the, the post-traumatic stress we're all going to have from COVID-19, people are going to be dealing with this for some time. There are millions, hundreds of millions, even people who take antidepressants currently. This could be a game-changing piece of that puzzle moving forward? Oh, for sure. I think, you know, you look at the market size of what psychedelic therapies could do for people, and it's in the billions of dollars. Um, I believe that, you know, with depression, with opioid addiction, with anxiety, which is just a fraction of the the ailments that, that psychedelics address, yeah. you know, you're looking at competing with a pharmaceutical industry, which has been around for, you know, frankly, tens of years, you know, yeah. and if we're able to even capitalize on, you know, 10% of that industry, you're looking at a, a multi-billion dollar industry for uh, companies like Core One Labs to enter. Yeah. And I think back to uh, not that long ago when, you know, people thought the sky would fall if um, marijuana, if cannabis was made not not just medicinally legalized, but recreationally legalized and being a part of the media and the run up to that happening, there were a lot of people who were chicken little, the sky is falling, the sky this is going to be the beginning of the end. It wasn't. And in fact, it's created a whole new uh, genre of, of medical health assistance from mm-hmm. cannabis products. Now, our psychedelics moving in that same direction on a broader scale, like what, and you're not a scientist, you're a business person, but I'm asking because you probably sat in on a meeting or two on this. Like there were people that just use THC and CBD tinctures, let's say, to help with pain and ailment or sleep issues or what have you, and then realized that they could up their CBD level and have some other benefits to just having that as part of their multivitamin on a day-to-day basis. Are there parts of this psilocybin universe that we couldn't even imagine now beyond having sort of thought of it as sort of that hippie drug and the, you know, the kids in their, in their (laughs) digging in their parents' (laughs) yards looking for mushrooms. I mean, that's where we live in BC. I remember you'd see teenagers out in the field. You're like, Oh, it's mushroom season. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, you know what? I think that cannabis, um, really the applications for cannabis are, are really strong, but I think that it's a very recreational based drug. And yes, there are a lot of people using it for uh, medical treatments, but a lot more people I think are using it for recreation. Right. However, I would say that with psychedelics, the, the ailments it's treating and the results that we're seeing from the success of the results that we're seeing is really uh, opening the door up for a far greater market uh, in pharmaceutical use than cannabis ever had. So, right. you know, if you're looking at, um, for example, depression and anxiety, the amount of people that are taking, you know, antidepressants is huge. The amount of people that are trying to get off opioids is massive. And, you know, there wasn't really that market for cannabis that existed before. Right. Whereas yeah. with psychedelics, we're really able to uh, tap into a market that existed for the medical uses. And now we're able to provide a better, more holistic, uh, more effective treatment for some of these ailments. Now, Joel, I'm not sure if you can answer this question for me, but I, as I said, I'm a, I'm a chicken when it comes to sampling, trying, what have you. Mm. When it comes to this uh, synthetic grade uh, psilocybin uh, and when it is then put into, let's say a capsule form, if somebody's going to use it on a daily basis in lieu of what has been their Prozac or their Zyban or whatever the antidepressant they might've been taken. I don't know. Um, when it, when it's put into that for, for somebody to try it for the first time, would they, it's not about getting high, right? It's not like changing your, it's, it's not the pivot that some people might fear. And like, yeah, this could exactly. take me on, this could take me on a trip for eight hours that I don't want to be on. It's about, no, right. No, a lot of what's, a lot of what's happening is these psychedelic drugs are being designed as a micro dosing. So right. you don't actually get a lot of the psychoactive effects. And if you look at the way these treatments are being done, you know, psychedelic assisted treatments are being done in combination with other uh, psychological treatments. So, you know, yeah. maybe it's an audio simulation or a visual simulation um, that goes along with, you know, taking some of these, some of these psychoactive drugs. Now, uh, I would say that for the most part, what scientists are really looking at right now is what people are calling microdosing, which is yeah. not the amount that gets you all, you know, high and messed up and, and takes you on a trip. It's giving you enough of a, of a dose to give your, to open your mind up. Which is the really cool part of this, I think. And what can, could take sort of the fear base, the, the stigma that comes from, it, you know, growing up in a time where it was labeled a certain way, it takes a little bit of time. That's why I brought up cannabis in it. It took some time for it to be, to be mm -hmm. switched where that, where it was no longer, oh my God, you're not doing that. Are you yeah. it, into, oh my God. So that's really helping you. Like that's mm -hmm. the, the next thing. So with the psychedelic sector picking up steam in the way that it obviously is on a global scale, I mean, we're, we're seeing it everywhere. What is it that sets your company, Core One Labs Inc., what sets it sort of apart? Is it the fact that you're looking to be the, the creator of that base in synthetic ingredient for a larger scale? Yeah, so Core One Labs actually has a variety of different assets, one of those being the producer of, of psilocybin. But as of right now, you know, there are uh, companies using synthetic psilocybin. The way we're planning to really separate ourselves is, is – coming in at a fraction of the cost of the entire market at a fraction of the time. So right. being able to have, you know, Coral One Labs produce uh, biosynthetic psilocybin for, you know, a hundredth of the cost of the current market, I think separates us from everybody else because a lot of what people are doing is working on clinical trials for specific drugs and they're not focused necessarily on creating the input material for that. So right, by doing sense. that, we really open our uh, market up to not only individual consumers through some of our other companies or through some, through some of our other assets, but also to uh, all of the companies working in the psychedelic space who are looking to put together drugs and clinical trials. That makes all kinds of sense. And hopefully that savings uh, ultimately with approved drugs, because that core ingredient is exponentially more inexpensive, that drug will then be greater availability to people in all socioeconomic walks of life, because seriously, mm -hmm. the antidepressant uh, piece of this puzzle and depression and anxiety and all that we've sort of touched on uh, is prevalent in all walks. So uh, this is very exciting. I'm, I'm 
Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you did this with us today. You taught me a little something for sure. And and please do uh, come back and give us updates as as things continue on with the company. What can we be looking forward to in the next in the in the next few short weeks and months? Well, you know what? Actually, I wanted to talk to you about uh, a recent transaction we completed. It's okay. called Comi Biosciences. And what this is, is it's actually four patents on four drugs that are all designed to treat specific illnesses. So we're looking to treat stroke. We're looking to treat Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and depression. And yeah, so, and this is led by uh, Dr. Santiago Ferro, and he is very well versed in bringing drugs from clinical trial all the way through to commercialization. Um, you know, he's worked, he's worked at uh, Sanofi in the past uh, as the clinical team leader for their new vaccines. He was on the internal uh, scientific review board for uh, no, uh, Novartis Pharmaceuticals. So uh, this man has a lot of experience in, in really commercializing drugs and getting them all the way through the process. Yeah, and that's and a big part of it. People are just... That's a huge part of it. People are absolutely chomping at the bit. I can tell you within my family alone, you just touched on four of the most major difficulties, shall we say, uh, and issues that are, are impacting family members. I think everybody knows somebody who's either had stroke, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Um, what was the fourth one? Depression. Depression. Well, there you go. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> oh Four man. Massive, massive issues that are in, in society, and yeah. And you know, with with Parkinson and Alzheimer's, there's obviously no cure, but with these uh, these psychedelic drugs mixed with a bioactive, naturally occurring ingredient, we believe that we can help target some of the some of the issues and help them live a better life by helping to uh, basically increase blood flow to the brain um, and some of these drugs and increase uh, neurological regeneration. Um, all of that is really uh, what we're looking to focus on yeah. to help people's lives better. Well, bless you for that. I'm looking yeah. forward to you. Now you have to come back and give me updates. You know, I'm very active in the Alzheimer's Society with my uh, dad. I talk about it quite often in, in the media. My dad has late Alzheimer's and anything that could have made his life even remotely better along the way, I would have been absolutely open to. So good luck with that. Uh, and Joel, and please do, as I said, come back with any updates on Core One Labs, Inc. Stock symbol, cool, C-O-O-L. And uh, Joel Shaker is the CEO. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much, Jody. Great talking to you.